Hi everyone, this is Monique Morrow once again, and I am following up with regard to a series on blockchain. And the last uh, program that I had uh, was with regard to blockchain and intellectual property. And the focus uh, had been in that particular blog around the uh, proof of providence of creatorship or creativity in terms of time stamping when one has actually done something uh, perhaps in the direction of uh, intellectual property, perhaps uh, in terms of a book, in terms of music uh, or, or movie or in these in particular areas of, or film. And it uh, really brings us to an area where, uh, you know, where is this intersectionality going to be between blockchain, intellectual property and proof of creativity or proof of creatorship or proof of something called a right. And it, whether or not that quote unquote of right is uh, ripe for some level of future discussion. But what here I think is very interesting is that blockchain will provide and certainly is in the position to provide that uh, opportunity for people to actually prove that they have created something, whether it's X or and or Y. So the intellectual property area is ripe for a definition, a renewal of what is intellectual property at the end of the day. And what does a timestamp uh, proof of X or provenance of Y look like in terms of creativity and creative rights? So I would be watching the space very, very, very carefully. There are companies that are really in, uh, starting to become in this space and looking at providing you with a uh, proof of X or proof of Y creativity right within 60 seconds. And so this is what we're looking at in terms of that potential for disintermediation. So. I want you to watch the space very much. Please read my blog once again. It was published in September. And the next blog is going to be looking at the intersectionality between blockchain and artificial intelligence. So looking forward to hearing from you and wishing you a wonderful, wonderful week. Thank you.